Okay, here we go. And today I'm going to do a quick video on how to create a new facility with the new integration tool and the newest version of the asset editor for those who wish to make some custom content for a state of K2. First, we're going to need a, a folder somewhere on anywhere in the system. So let's just call it new test. I want to go in there and make a data k2 folder. Gonna need a content folder. Then you're gonna want to copy the file path to wherever you, what kind of content you're making. So if we go to the latest data k2 content, making a facility, going to game systems. I'm going to go into facility. I'm going to pick a facility type. And then I'm just going to name it tester. And within here, I'm going to want to use the forge as a basic template. So I need the forge and the forge build action. And then I'm going to want, let's say, a kitchen action or make seeds from food. Uh, I'm going to want to name them all. Match, match my facility that I'm building. Then, yeah, then I want to go into the facility file itself. So if you remember, this used to be called Forge. I've now called it Tester. So I'm going to find the link to path to itself. And I'll need to adjust that to point to its new location. I'm going to need the link to the action. So I'm going to change one of these actions. I'm going to change convert materials to parts. And that will be my new action. Obviously, you can add new actions, but it takes a bit longer. And I'm just going to show you how to do it this way really quick. And I'm also going to need the build action, and that will point to itself. The other buttons can stay pointing to the old Forge buttons. I'm not going to change them. If you do want to change them, you could just copy paste them in here and rename them the same way. So now that I've renamed Forge, I will need to find the forge string and also change that. The underscore C indicates it's pointing to a blueprint class, which means an asset file. So I will need to keep the underscore C there. I also want the build action to be changed and the materials to parts will be changed to test to action make seeds from food. Now, each file that you change will also have a default pointing to itself, which will also be adjusted. And that is the header references done. So this file now points to itself and to these new files that I've moved over here. Ready? That's a new version of Unreal Engine downloading. For anything that has display info, want to go into the display info block and value 2 is essentially the namespace for that string um, and to stop you overwriting the original strings give it a namespace that matches ability call it whatever you want The in actions here, I've got my tester action. These are updated automatically. It's actually a number five because it, this isn't actually a string. It's just a number of minus five, which points to the link class minus five, which links to the header, 
which we've changed. And also 17 also points to a header, which we've also changed. The only thing that's colored isn't actually a string, it's just a number reference that the asset editor prints out as a string for you. So don't worry about having to go for an edit, all of this stuff. It's all done dynamically within the file as long as you're editing the correct headers. So just to recap, that's tester, tester, tester action, tester, tester, and tester action, default tester, and value to testers on any text properties. So that is that file done. Now we're going to want obviously a build action. We're going to need to build our facility. So same principle on here. Going to header. Going to tester. Want the tester build action. We're going to want the F for forge build action. We want the default build action. Now this doesn't point to any other files, so that's all we need to edit in here. Now we can also go in and get the display info. Then we'll need to edit value two. So that it doesn't overwrite the original files. We can save that. And since we want this new action to work in here, so I have to go in here, do the same thing with the header list. Tester, tester action makes seed from food. And we want the Action makes seed from food. Want the default for the file. So now this is its own new button. So it has a display info, so I want it to close. Now you'll also see in the header here, it points to the facility types, kitchen, kitchen, collect seed, loot table. Uh, the reason for this is because the item table effects, which is what you get when you click the button, points to that. It uses that item table to get loot. So if you wanted to change the loot table for this particular action, what you would want to do is also go and fetch that file, put it in here and do all these edits for that file as well, adjust any values in that. I'm not going to go that deep. This is just a quick tutorial on these three files. Um, pretty much anything it links to in the header is something you can go and edit, modify. You can point it to completely different files. Um, obviously, you can change all the values in here. I'm not going to go for all that. Um, you can just play around on the files and figure out what's there, what's changeable. Um, so that is that file done. Let me just double check. Tester action makes seeds. Uh, default test direction makes seeds and test direction makes seeds. Yeah, that's fine. Save that. All right, so then you're going to want to head back to the content uh, state K2 folder. You're going to make a new text document and you're going to delete the entire name and call it metadata.json. Yes. If you don't see the .txt when you originally make that file, so here, see the .txt. If you don't see that, you'll need to go into view and make sure you've got file name extensions turned on. We'll need to remove that txt and replace it with JSON. And we can open this up. And here is the template for the JSON file. Uh, this will be posted somewhere at some point. Uh, Hoping to have a readme up on the Discord and obviously distribute with the program itself. Uh, but for now, you can copy this 
from the testing room on the State Decay 2 modding Discord. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description. But here it is the testing room. It's in the pins. Uh, that you can come and grab that, or hopefully with a readme file when that's done. So I'm making a new facility, which means I can get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of the bar. I'm not making any of those. I'm making new outfits. I'm not doing any scripting. Um, I'm only building one. And I want to point this to your new facility, obviously. And you want to put a category for it to go into. And make one up. And that looks good. Oh, obviously. I'm not going to worry about changing any of this, but that, that will be your pack name. That will be what displays in the mod manager. There's your author name, your version. And this is your description that pops up in the tooltip. And that's fine. Then you're going to want the asset editor again and go to package folder. You'll want to find the uh, folder you were using, which is there. Select the state of K2 folder and package. That will then create a mod name pack inside the state of K2 folder. Take and drop into your packs folder. Then I'm going to boot up the mod. Uh, manager slash content integrator. Oh yeah, and as you can see, it's changed the name of the pack to the mod file name, which was, uh, don't have the file open anymore. That's whoopsie. As you can see, pack name has become the actual pack name. In the manager, it shows a really super cool mod name, just the display name, author, person who made the mod, version, when I hover over it, makes all things work for the tooltip. So I'm using the Steam beta, so I'll make sure to check the box here and create integration pack. That will then make a mod integration. It should have a JSON file in that it's not reading for some reason, but I'll fix that later. And by later, I do actually mean right now, because it was a somewhat critical bug that had a 1 in 256 chance of occurring, and it just happened to occur. So again, Steam beta checked, hit create integration pack, file pops up, and this time it actually works. So now that the integration has been added and we've got the really cool super mod name mod tester thing, that is everything you need to do to integrate brand new content into the game. And just to verify it's actually working, let's go and load up the game quickly. And I jump into the testy community, which has graciously been provided by Zod C137, I believe is his name. I can never remember what the number is at the end. Uh, he's been helping me test a lot of the apps I built. So much kudos to him. He also makes a lot of amazing mods if you want to check him out on Nexus. His wacky community closet currently has over 200 custom outfits in it. That's a really nice one to check out if you want a bit of flavor in your game. I'm in a bad spot. And now that we're in the game with the integration in place, pop open a cleared space. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see the whole test category with the test forge has been added to the game. Uh, Specifically for facilities, you can have five facilities per category. So if you do try to use a category that's already full, for example, if I had added it to crafting and building, it will add a new crafting and building to category below it and start adding them to that. 
because uh, if you add more than five to a specific category, it starts messing up the UI. Um, so, I mean, you can build new categories, use existing categories, however you wish to do it. Um, that is obviously just for facilities. Uh, you can do this with items, enclaves, skills, outfits. Uh, there's a variety of different lists that we can add stuff to. Uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry, uh, well, you have enjoy. Other things in 